So I want to give you something from the uh, uh, Von Mises uh, people. This is from Mises.org. I, I think it is such a great article that I should read it uh, verbatim. The most destructive natural disasters are never 100% natural. Human choices, land use, and government policies play a big role in how harmful hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, flash floods, and wildfires are to affect communities. Though the details are still emerging, it has become clear that government failure did much to make this disaster worse and possibly even started it. While the so-called experts are blaming climate change and in the process demanding that government grab even more power and authority to someday give us better weather, the destructiveness of this fire was the product of an all-powerful and all-incompetent regime. The specific origins of this fire are still being investigated, but there is much we already know. The city of Lahaina sits on the west coast of Maui, Hawaii's second largest island. It's surrounded by grassland, much of which is owned by the state. This is really important. Nearly a decade ago, Hawaii Wildlife Management Organization, a research nonprofit, warned the Hawaiian government that the area around Lahaina was extremely fire prone due to frequent downslope winds, steep terrain, and dry grass. Little to nothing was done by the state government to address these risks. A subsequent report in 2020 added that an invasive species of exceptionally flammable grass was prevalent in the surrounding fields and that passing hurricanes created strong winds known to fuel wildfires on the islands. Early last week, Hurricane Dora crossed the ocean south of Hawaii. By early Tuesday morning, August 8th, winds as fast as 60 miles an hour were blowing down the slopes of West Maui Mountains into Lahaina. Around uh, sunrise, a large fault was detected in the power grid, indicating a downed power line. 20 minutes later, the first reports of fire came in from an area around the road uphill and upwind from the city. The area where flames were first spotted is full of electrical uh, infrastructure, mostly operated by Hawaiian Electric, the state's monopoly electricity supplier. This included a substation and a multitude of power lines. Most of the land in the area is owned by the state of Hawaii, except for a parcel belonging to the estate of one of Hawaii's last princesses. This parcel housed on a solar farm supplying electricity to the Hawaiian Electric substation. Early last year, NPR published a glowing article about the solar project, praising, uh, praising it as the direct result of government regulation crafted to help transition Hawaii to 100% renewable power by 2045. But on the morning of August 8, as winds hammered the old wooden utility poles, this highly electrified area in the dry grasses above Lahaina was quickly becoming dangerous, yet no formal procedure was in place to shut off sections of the grid in the face of severe fire risks. As a result, 29 fully energized poles fell across West Maui that day. Say that again, 20 electric, 29 Fully energized electrical poles. Have you ever seen one of those go down? They tend to throw sparks. Even with the down poles in the way, the first firefighters on the scene met with some early success. Around 9 a.m., the county fire department declared the fire 100% contained. But the message to residents included an ominous request. The county's water pumps were powered by electricity much of which was frantically being turned off to deactivate the down lines. Officials asked the public to conserve water to preserve water pressure. But by mid-afternoon, a flare-up brought the fire back to life on the Lahaina Bypass, a major road that heads straight into town. 
The flames moved swiss- swiftly into Lahaina at 4.46 p.m., one minute after the county government finally set out an alert to warn the city's population, largely without power, about the flare-up that had occurred over an hour before. To make matters worse, county officials failed to activate emergency sirens, leaving residents unaware of the danger bearing down on them. And as firefighters heroically rushed toward the flame and trying to save their own community, they found that there was little to no water pressure in the fire hydrants, which quickly ran dry. Uh, So far, I haven't heard anything about global warming. With a single backed up highway leading out of the city, many residents of Lahaina had nowhere to go. Some scrambled into the ocean to escape the smoke and the flames. But in the end, many couldn't get out. At least 99 people have been confirmed dead. And as of this writing, making this the deadly American wildfire in over a century, in addition, 2,207 buildings were destroyed with property damages expected to reach $5.5 billion. To review, a power company shielded from competition by the state placed electrical infrastructure among highly flammable state-owned grass fields above the historic city of Lahaina, which the government was twice warned were highly susceptible to fire. And once fire broke out, a combination of defective water infrastructure, terrible communication by government officials, and only one escape route doomed the people of Lahaina to the worst wildfire experience in this country in over 100 years. This was government failure through and through. In Human Action, Ludwig von Mises explains that on the market, the ultimate source of profits is foresight, the ability to anticipate future conditions. And economic loss occurs when market actors fail to anticipate the future. The possibility of riches if one succeeds and the guarantee of painful failures if one doesn't forces producers and service providers on the market to constantly weigh risks and opportunities. Government, however, immunizes itself from the profit and loss system and therefore from much of the need to weigh risk. Sure, some county officials may resign because of this and the share price of Hawaiian Electric may dip, but the people of Maui will be forced to keep compensating the very organizations that have failed them and there is nothing natural about that kind of a disaster. Now, I want you to take this beyond Maui. Why are we still in the financial troubles that we were in in 08? Why are we still looking at banking collapses? I'll tell you why. Because the banks weren't held responsible. No one felt the actual pain except you. Why are our schools failing us? Because the teachers' unions are in bed with the Department of Education And no one is held responsible. Nobody pays the price for this education except you and your children. Afghanistan. Why did all those people die? Don't know because no one was held responsible. Inflation. It's the government in bed with the Fed. And no one is held responsible. Crime on the streets. No one is held responsible. Crime and corruption in D.C. No one is held responsible. The media lies and lies and lies, and no one is held responsible. All of these things is the government in bed with private corporations or unions. And they don't have to pay a price because the government is in bed with them. The government never has to pay a price because they can just print more money. The only one that pays a price is you. And in this particular case, the poor people of Lahaina in Maui. Where are they going to go? Because I can guarantee you if dark future is right, the government is going to take that land and make it into a national park or something like that. 
please help the people in Lahaina today. Any donation is welcome, but let's raise money and show the the average person, the people who actually lost their their homes and their lives, that we actually care. Go to mercuryone.org, mercuryone.org, and donate now. A disaster relief fund at mercuryone.org.